Hi, in this video, we're going to find all relative extrema of the function f of x equals x times e to the x. To do this, we'll start by finding the critical numbers. We'll call a critical number as a number in the domain of the function where the derivative is zero or undefined. So as a good first step, we'll start by taking the derivative. So f prime of x. So we have a product here. We have x times e to the x. So to find the derivative, we're going to use something called the product rule. We'll call the product rule says if you have, say, um, g times h, and you take the derivative, think of g as your first function and h as your second function. It's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So in this case, this is our first function. This is our second function. So taking the derivative of the first, we simply get 1 times the second, so e to the x, plus the first, times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. All right, so this is not undefined, so we can cross that part out. And so now we just need to find where it's equal to 0. So we'll set it equal to 0, and we're looking for critical numbers. These are numbers in the domain of the original function where their derivative is either undefined or equal to zero. So now we can pull out an e to the x here. So we get one plus x, and that's equal to zero. All right, so we have a product equal to zero, so we can set each factor equal to zero. e to the x is never zero, so that leads to nothing. So we get x equals negative one. So this is in the domain of the original function meaning that if you plug it in, there's no issues, there's no division by zero, there's no negative numbers inside square roots. So this is our critical number. And so if we are going to have a relative maximum or a minimum, then um, it's going to occur at a critical number because whenever you have a relative max or min at a particular x value, that x value uh, is going to be a critical number. Now you can have a critical number and have no max and min, so we have to take this a step further. So we have two ways to proceed. We can use what's called the first derivative test, or we can use the second derivative test. Let's use the first derivative test. So this is gonna be the first derivative test. So the first derivative test basically says we take our critical number, and we plot it on a number line like this. And now we're gonna test uh, to see whether the derivative is positive or negative. For example, if the derivative is negative here, that means the function's decreasing. If it's positive here, that means the function's increasing. So in this case, we would have a min, right? But it could be backwards, right? It could be something like, you know, increasing then decreasing, in which case we have a max. But, it could also be the case that we have nothing. So let's just go ahead and plug in some numbers and see what's going on. So we can pick any number smaller than negative one and want to plug that into this derivative here. Let's try negative two. So plugging it in here, we get e to the negative two, negative, oh, one plus negative two. So this is e to the negative two times negative one. That's less than zero. So the function is in fact decreasing on this interval here. Now let's pick a number bigger than negative one. A really easy number we can try is zero. Again, we plug those into the derivative, right? If the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. If the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. So here we get e to the zero and one plus zero. So that's one, so that's positive. So in fact, we have the behavior where the function is decreasing, 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 and then it starts increasing at negative one. So what that means is we're going to have a relative minimum at x equals negative one because negative one's a critical number. If negative one were like a vertical asymptote or something like that, that wouldn't work, right? It's gotta be at a critical number. So that's what the first derivative test says. It says if you have this behavior at a critical number, you have a relative min, and if you have this behavior at some critical number, then you have a relative max. Okay, so 
Now what we're going to do is actually find the value of that relative minimum. So to actually find the value, we take the negative 1 and we plug it back into the original. So plug x equals negative 1 back into the original function. Okay, so you want to go back to your original function, which in our case is f of x equals x times e to the x. So let's plug in negative 1. So we get negative 1 e to the negative 1. So that's negative 1 over e. So this is the value of the relative minimum. So this is it here. This is the relative minimum. Okay, that's going to be the relative minimum. Um, a lot of times um, people will want the ordered pair as to like where it occurs. So it occurs at the ordered pair negative 1 comma negative 1 over e. Um, so that's that's where it occurs and the actual minimum value is is this one here. Uh, note this this function I didn't ask but I'll just tell you so this function here x e to the x it has no absolute max because if you take the limit as x approaches infinity of x e to the x both of these just get bigger and bigger and bigger so the product gets bigger so this is infinity so there is no you know, maximum y value. Likewise, if you approach negative infinity, okay, if you do that, um, what's going to happen is that um, this is actually going to approach zero, okay? Because um, you can think of it, maybe this will make it make more sense. You can think of it like this, right? I can rewrite it. I can bring this downstairs and make the exponent negative. So what, what's happening here is this is approaching negative infinity and this is getting really, really, really big, uh, but it's getting bigger at a much faster rate than this is getting smaller. So this fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so it's approaching zero. In any case, the question wasn't asking all of this. Uh, I just wanted to mention it, but yeah. So that would be the relative minimum. I hope this video has been helpful to someone. Good luck.